When I think about AoEs, I'm thinking about characters who can hit hard. Especially when they can be really annoying, like SP Matthew, Theon, and all that. I'm not really thinking of someone like Licorice or Mariendel, who are slow but are providing a lot for their teammates. That's what exactly Agnes is. She is the second character in this Kuro no Kiseki crossover we'll be going over. Agnes is really good. Arguably broken if you will. Her talent will increase her int and defense when she has 3 more buffs. After she has dealt damage, she can heal an ally whoever has the lowest amount of HP. If there are allies within 5 blocks of her, they will not die. But they will get their near death effect where they get their mobility reduced by 2, the damage dealt decreased by 50%, and they cannot use their active skills for 2 turns. It ignores immunity and cannot be dispelled, and they can only trigger the revive once per battle. But at 5 or 6 stars, you can do it twice. So yeah, she's a supporting pseudo healer, who is also a AoE attacker. Yes, I know those debuff from reviving do suck, it's really bad, but I think it's fair. It's better than being completely dead. Also spoiler, her 3c can counteract that. But we'll go over more about that in a little bit. For her class mastery stones, you want HP, int, and defense for about all of them. You don't necessarily need magic defense on her helmet since mages and holy units like her already have a high natural base magic defense. Then for the arena stone, you want a defensive set like mine. So HP, int, defense, crit resist, and crit damage resist. Her best soldiers to use are most definitely the shrine maiden. For you late bloomers, learning more about the game, I know with the crossover, there might be some new people coming into the game watching this. These soldiers, if they are at max HP, their physical damage taken is decreased by a lot, depending on how far you upgrade them. In my case, they're already maxed out. Literally the best soldiers to use on a support character, if you want them to survive. The Holy Guard Mage can be nice to use if you, for whatever reason, don't have the Shrine Maiden upgraded. All they do is have their defense and magic defense be increased when they are forced into battle. Plus, if their hero class is holy, then their attack is increased. The dwarf adventurer can also be fine if you want her to deal a little bit more damage. However, that's if you just want her to deal more damage. I personally wouldn't recommend these if you're just trying to have her survive stuff. You're really only using these guys if you're focusing more on attacking with her. I never used these soldiers before and I did some testing earlier and I did find that that they do help increase AoE damage. So yeah, these guys aren't half bad. Also, did you guys know, I know this is going to be random, but the deck gunners have more power than the sorceress. Isn't that crazy? And it's by a large amount too. The sorceress are known to be one of the highest power soldiers. So it's pretty crazy that the deck gunners outpower them by quite a lot. For her weapon, she doesn't really need anything special. You can just straight up give her the red moon and you'll be solid. Blue Moon is nice as well as a alternative. However, if you do want her to hit hard, then you can opt in for the Miracle Staff. The armor, you can go with the Tenyo's Robe. Galaxy Cloak is a fine one to use if you don't have one of those just for the stats increase alone. Same thing with the helmet, you can go with the Tenyo's Head Address or the Electric Headwear. Since Agnes wants to be close to her teammates, it can work. It's a great way to counter someone who can push or pull when you apply its buff for one of your team and herself as well, since it does give them immunity to displacement effect. I really only recommend this for PvP though, since there's characters like Archon who can do stuff like that. Otherwise, you can opt in for the Dark Crown for the same reason as the Galaxy Cloak. The Glory Headwear isn't a bad one to use. I would only use it if you have her in her Mage class because she does have to be in mixed forces in order to be able to revive if she dies from fixed damage. And most of the time, you are going to be running the Shrine Maiden with her, and the Shrine Maiden are holy units. For the accessory, you want the Heart of Redemption, not only for the healing effect, but the immunity to fixed damage, which is going to help a lot when you are running Shrine Maiden with her. Because let's say that you are being attacked by Wetam using Ragnarok. Ragnarok is a weapon that does fixed damage before battle, so if that procs, the Shrine Maiden will lose its ability to take less physical damage. And then next thing you know, Agnes is dead because of that. If you don't have one of these, then look around to see if you have something called the Meditation Ring. It's a SR equipment, but it's really special because it gives immunity to fixed damage. I think it's like one of the only SR equipment that's really useful, unless there's something that I'm missing. Swordsmith Metal can work as well. It also gives fixed damage immunity, but also from being silenced. Which isn't really a bad thing to use on her, to make sure that she's always ready to use her 3C whenever possible. So her having the Holy Ring can work for that exact reason. 
but if you like to spam, you can go with the Dimensional Jewel. For the enchant that's best for it to use, Clock for the same reason as the Dimensional Jewel, Cool Moon isn't bad for a greater amount of heal since it increases her stats. I guess magic can be optional if you want your Agnes to be a hard hitter. So if that's something that you want to go with, go ahead and knock yourself out. Alright, so hopefully that was helpful if you're having trouble building Agnes. So let's go ahead and walk through her first awakening stage. Alright, so for this stage, we're going to be up against Rachel, Ferrakia, and then Bozel. So these are the skills that I'm going to be rocking with. The one see right here, long range, you can't go wrong with that. You'll be able to outrange everyone in here. You can do this one as well. The debuff is going to be nice to take advantage of. You can use this one as well. It does more damage against demons, which is going to be nice to deal with Ferrakia and Bozul. And I highly recommend this one so that you can heal yourself. The soldier I'm going to be using is the Sorceress. You can even use the Deck Gunner as well. If you or the enemy is on a defensive terrain, the soldier will ignore 15% of the enemy's defense. Okay, so to deal with Rachel, she does have an AUE skill, so I am going to be staying quite a bit back, back right here, and I'm going to use her 1C AOE skill to do a little bit of damage to ensure that we one shot her. And then afterwards, just hit her with a single target skill. Easy as that. If you can't finish her on the next turn, use her other AOE skill to finish her off in the next turn. Or you can use her 2C AOE skill on the first turn because it does more damage against mages and it will also lower their magic defense. So if you do it that way, that should help you out a lot more. The same strategy is going to apply to Ferrakia. She has this one skill that does reach 3 blocks long. So watch out for that because if she does hit you with it, she gets to act again. So I'm going to be doing the same thing as I did last time against Rachel. Hit her with the AoE and then literally on the next turn, finish her off. If you have Agnes in her holy class, Ferrakia should be no problem at all. And especially Bozel. And then with Bozel, I'm just going to wreck him with a bunch of AoEs. I feel like you can kill all of them with just AoEs because Agnes can actually hit pretty hard. Agnes in her holy class really makes this a walk in the park. I know Rachel is going to be troubling for some of you guys, so just try to chip away some damage from her by using some AoE skill. Then hopefully once you do enough damage, you are able to finish her off, and then taking out Ferrakia and then Bozel shouldn't be that bad to deal with because Agnes does have skills that are super effective against demons. Alright, so her 3C skill. This is the skill that I was talking about earlier, the one that counteracts the revive debuff. It has a 3 turn cooldown. When allies have the near death effect, the skill cooldown is decreased by 1. The skill does heal her teammate within 4 blocks around her. That dispels 2 debuffs and gives them 2 buffs where they heal 20% of their HP after taking action and their damage dealt is increased by 15%, all for 2 turns. Then it removes the near death effect. For sure, Agnes is the only one who can dispel cannot be dispelled effect. I know, it's weird. So this really makes Agnes one of her kind. So you could say that it is somewhat broken, but let's save that thought for when we actually go to the showcase. Alright, so for those who are curious, this is her 3C animation skill right here. Alright, so yet again, this is going to be one of those rare cases where I do show off the second awakening stage. I will always say this just in case there are new people watching this. Most of the time, I don't show them. And that's because you are able to use three other characters and they are super reliable to use. Your character will be able to do some work, yeah. But the characters they give you are able to carry you. So yeah, that's what makes these so much more easier compared to the first Oricon stage. But I will be going through it just in case there are people having trouble with this because I know it can be really tricky. But for those who don't care, you can go ahead and skip this part. Alright, so these are the skills that I'm going to be rocking with. The 1C, just because it's really good, while also being able to reduce a skill cooldown. I'm going to be using this one for the debuff, and then Master Tech so that you can take in some hits. And then the soldiers I'm going to be using, just the Shrine Maiden. Alright, so for the first part, I'm literally just going to be setting up. I'm not going to be rushing in yet, I am just going to let them come to me. Alright, so now we can begin. So I'm going to have Agnes just go in right here. I'm going to have Agnes go in first so that she can apply some debuff. And then may as well have Bond go in and use his AoE skill. Do some damage. I think this one does debuff as well. And it also lets him guard as well. And then may as well have Elaine just go ahead and AoE right here. She's gonna AoE. She acts again. Then afterwards, I am gonna kill Fluentia. Fluentia is gonna be taking out because she is gonna be healing her teammates. And that is gonna be really troubling. So the fixed damage takes her out. And then I'm literally just gonna have Fluentia heal. She's just gonna heal everyone else. And then we're not gonna be doing anything yet. I'm not gonna waste her strategy token. I think that's what it's called. We're going to be hanging back, just chill, let them do whatever they want. The person I'm really going to be aiming for is Agnes. 
because she can provide a revive. Not only just a revive, but also some healing as well. So I'm just gonna have Fluencia just attack Fawn, may as well. Literally almost died right there. And then we're gonna use Act again on Elaine, and hopefully this can take out Agnes. Oh no. Okay, so I'm not worried. I'm not gonna worry. Everything is gonna be cool. They can barely do anything. Um. Oh yeah, that is not good. Vaughn takes himself out. Okay. Elaine took out my Elaine. Actually, there's nothing to worry about. I'm not. I'm not I was. I wasn't worried about a thing. I wasn't worried about a thing. What are you talking about? That you. Um. You had. You. You. All right. So Flanchard just heal everyone to full, and then we're gonna have Vaughn here. Oh wait, the soldiers have the physical damage reduction. Okay, so I'm actually gonna have Agnes here take out. I mean, not take out, but do some damage against Elaine. Okay, so that's good because that took out the soldier, and then hopefully Vaughn here can take out Elaine. Okay, so there we go. Elaine is gone, and now it's just only Agnes. There we go. Um, not the way how I was gonna play it. Just in general, this whole thing isn't really that bad at all. Just as long as you're playing it really smart, you can clear this no problem. And Vaughn barely just did any damage right there. What in the world? I would say, as long as you take out Florentia, you should be pretty solid. Just hope that your Vaughn can actually tank some hits. Agnes was the second one that I want to take out, but it didn't really go as planned. The second awakening stages aren't as bad as they seem to be. They can be tricky, yeah, but as long as you're playing really smart, if you know how these characters work and all that, you may realize that it's not bad as it looks like. The challenging part is the first awakening stage, but it's just you playing it smart and basically them forcing you to learn how these characters work. So hopefully that gave you guys a good idea. But with that being cleared, let's go ahead and move on to the showcase. Alright, so to better understand Agnes, her talent whenever she does have 3 more buffs, I think whenever she does have like 5 stars or maybe 6 stars, it's 2. But in this case, I have her at 3 stars, so it's 3 more buffs. Her int and defense will increase by 10%. Agnes does have 2 buffs, excluding the talent one and the, and the secret realm one. These two right here are the only ones that count towards that. And I got these by using her 3C, so by having Christian giving her a buff, I don't want to use the faction buff because it'll be hard to tell. You can see that her int and defense did increase by a little bit right there. Her 1C right here, this is going to be her main tool whenever it comes to just basic attacking and make use of her healing that comes from her talent. So what this thing does is that it reaches 7 blocks long, but whenever you select a grid, it turns into a 1 ring range. So if this skill does damage, it reduces the skill cooldown of all other allies within 2 blocks of her by 1 turn. So you can see here that Sophia and Kristan have a skill that's on cooldown. So if we go ahead and take a look at the skill right here, you can see that it goes pretty far. It's really crazy. So let's say that I want to attack from 2 blocks long, I click on here, and it attacks within a square range. But by actually hitting an enemy, so there we go, so it should reduce one other ally's skill. So yeah, right there. She gets to use the skill again. Unfortunately, it's only one other ally though. I kind of wish it was at least two, but I guess the long range kind of makes up for it. She's really not going to be doing a whole lot of damage with this one, but her other skill right here, it's going to be her killer move. So it's a skill that does more damage against mage and holy units, and it also reduces their attack, int, and magic defense for two turns. So it reaches six blocks long and three blocks wide. So this should do more damage against Leaden. Let's see how much damage it does. 11k right there. But you don't always have to use it that way. You want to use it on anyone else so that you can weaken them. So let's say that the opponent wants to come at you. And if Agnes can reach them with the skill, you can poke them with it. Deal quite a bit of damage. Really, the only skill that has a killing capability. So not only just that, but you're also going to be doing that for the debuff too. Okay, so I have to use a bunch of clock because of stupid RNG. So I'm hoping Sophia can suicide right here. Okay, so Letting does attack. Perfect, perfect. Come on. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. Finally. That took so long. Okay, so the near death effect. So it has all the diva put into one together. So mobility is reduced by two. Cannot guard. Damage dealt decreased by 50%. And cannot use active skills. It cannot be dispelled, which is very concerning. But her 3C can dispel two debuffs and applies two buffs where they can heal 20% of their HP after taking action and gives them 15% damage dealt increase for two turns while also removing the near death effect. And if you take a look at Agni's buff, you can see that she no longer has that her talent buff. But another way that you can notice that if you don't see the unflinching on any of your teammates. So by using this 3C, 
So, there we go. So, it actually dispelled the revive debuff while also giving two of the buffs that it offers. Really, the only character that can dispel cannot be dispelled effect, which is wild to even think about. So, overall, Agnes is truly one of a kind. When it comes to support, she can do a pretty solid job at that, but it's also kind of weird. She can heal her teammates whenever she attacks to whoever has the lowest amount of HP, which isn't all that bad considering that she has a weak skill to take advantage of that, and they can hit pretty far. I don't think she's really reliable as a single healer, even if you have her at 5 or 6 stars where she can heal 2 allies at a time. Her 1c AoE skill will be her main tool when it comes down to that, since it does have a 1 turn cooldown. Her 3c can heal, yeah. There's going to be a ton of situations where you gotta think to yourself, oh I should save this just in case if any of my teammates dies. Cause those debuffs are brutal. Unless maybe you're confident that they can tank the hits so that she can use it as a emergency healing or whatever the reason is. So all in technicality, she's more of a pseudo healer. Whatever you want to bring for her 2c really just depends on what you're facing. Her AoE is very strong with a good potential to maybe even one shot holy and mage units. And don't forget that she's just not a support character. She's pretty good at doing some AoE damage. But mainly it would be that skill that's going to be really more destructive, her 2c AoE one. She also has access to mass protect and resist for some coverage option. You really got to make sure that you build her defensively enough for her to be able to survive hits. Because if she dies, then that means no more revive. Because she's really only offering that for her teammates, not for herself. Agnes is someone that you really gotta try to protect. She really forces you to play around her, making sure that you stick pretty close to her so that you're in range of her revive because that's the main biggest tool in her kit. So that's why generally you will always be playing it really slow with her. Oh and before we move on, there's one big thing that I forgot to mention about her 3c. So whenever an ally does trigger the near death effect, the skill cooldown is decreased by 1. So right now we do have it on a 110 cooldown and then we're gonna have Anna get killed from the dragon right now. But for some reason, I don't know why, but it doesn't tell you that the skill does get refreshed. So you get to see right now that the skill did get cooled down after the revive was triggered. So if we go back, this is before the revive and then this is after the revive. I wish they made it a little bit more obvious. I'm guessing with the revive trigger that they thought it was good enough. But still, I feel like it should be a little bit more obvious. Like, have that clock effect that shows exactly similar to what her Wincy does, you know? So, there we have it. That was Agni's showcase. I feel like she can still be usable even at 3 and 4 stars since it doesn't really hurt her all that much. Unlike Elaine where she actually needs to be at 5 stars to effectively get going. But I still encourage you to get her to 5 stars so that she can revive twice instead of one time. In PvP, with the right box, she'll fit perfectly in with the right playstyle. In PvE, I don't think she's all that bad. In general, there's a lot who can replace her. But let's say that you're struggling with a boss or something. I feel like Agnes could be pretty useful, even in Ancient Beckoning, because she can revive and provide tons of healing. If you're running something like Gift of Eternal Life and using her Holy Word skill. But that's all I got for you guys. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Agnes or if there's anything else that you want to share about her. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And yeah, thanks for watching, your fellow Zeke.